that was your original collecting yard, was it, historically? It was, yeah, that was the original collecting yard as far as the, the up and over gate. And then we were guilty. We, we never allowed for the numbers we, we, we've grown to. So in, it would have been about 2005, we extended the yard out here. Right. Uh, we dug for, further into the bank and then we were hit by um, uh, bedrock slate sticking out. Even though we could put down good surfaces on it, it just wear away. Okay. We we're getting a lot of white lines issue. Uh, back of heels were getting damaged. Right. So that's when we, we went investigating to see how could we overcome it. Okay, so this approach here is a key a key approach here, a lot of cows coming in it here. It is, yeah. Every day. Main flow at the moment, you're, you're, you're pretty much talking 50-50 off the two corners of the yard yeah. where the cows come and go. Uh, above this way, you're talking this this 95 percent of the ground up this way goes through the underpass yeah has to go up two steep ramps that were affected by bedrock okay um so yeah th that's th that's the, the main reason they went in that's and historically that would have been 100 percent of summer grazing was all up that road okay. so it was okay so hills are a challenge here i see you have a gate there it, it allows a bit of flexibility does it on your hills it does yeah yeah, um, yeah they were like we're up on top of the hill. We're, we're not massively steep, but between the top of the yard and the bottom of the yard is 36 feet. So um, everything is working in steps down across, and we even have a couple of steps in the cow shed. Yes. When we saw how well they were working here, we actually broke off ramps in the cow shed, and we've put in steps just because the cows are more confident. And it's a yeah. flat surface, and they're, they're so happy stepping up and down. Yes. So. How long are these steps in? Uh, these went in 2005, so did it. Okay, so you've a lot of experience with it, so yeah, yeah. Uh, good luck. This is uh, this is primarily put in because it, it was a lot of traffic was coming up and down, so we said we'd start closest to the yard. If we're going to go spending money, we'd go where the heavy traffic is. And uh, when we saw how well they worked the following year, then we went and put them in above the underpass. Okay, so, so. machinery and stuff like that, do you move machinery in, in a different road or? Yeah, yeah. no, it, 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 this end of the yard is solely for cows. Yeah. Um, we don't follow cows with um, a, a quad or the gator either. Um, we, we work batch latches and we, we prefer to walk. You get to see the, the cows as well. Most of the time cows are coming in, you, you don't have to herd them. But tractors don't go up there, gators don't go up there right, at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's why we went full width out steps. We are planning another underpass at the moment. We'll be talking to your team later about it. But what we're talking about doing with that one, because that's on a main traffic area, and also heading to heifer ground, there's going to be the gator going in and out two, three times a day. Yeah. So what we're thinking of that is putting on the inside of the curve steps, yes. possibly two meters wide, and then having a, a ramp out further for okay. the gator to run up and yeah. down. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. So as we're getting along, we're, we're starting to learn how to, to maximize the, the flow of the cows off them. Yes, understood. Yeah. So prior, before you had your underpass, was it a big job crossing cows? It was, yeah. Um, they said we had to, half the grazing ground traditionally was across the road. So, um, yeah, it was myself and my father that was on the farm at that time. Uh, we were milking roughly around 90 cows at the, at the, at the time when we started thinking, thinking of the underpass. Yes. Uh, yeah, and there was, cows used to come up the lane and then stand. And then after milking, as soon as the last row was on, one of us would come up and let them off. And... Um, yeah, it was taking, we were counting roughly an hour a day crossing roads between letting cows out and bringing them back in. So, and I suppose um, lameness as well is an issue then, as if you're holding cows as well as you're losing time, does other, it, other it, negatives? It is, yeah. It, no, it took, took a bit of, uh, I suppose, uh, convincing my father that this was what we needed to do. The road is incredibly quiet. We used to just put up two bits of bale and try and go off up, collect the cows and bring them home. Yeah. And the twines would be left alone. Um, but it was time originally why we went at the underpass and it was only the following year then we suddenly saw there was a massive drop in lameness. Right. But what we did actually, the year coming up to convincing my father we needed to put in the underpass, I started measuring milk yield on different paddocks. Yes. And the fact that the cows were standing here for entering from 10 minutes to an hour before they crossed the road, the field directly across the road we were losing 0.6 of a litre and paddock 15 on the other side of the hill we were losing 1.8 litres every time we grazed those ones compared to grazing the field here right beside the parlour. Okay. Yeah, no way so, it's here. Yeah. yeah. So just on milk yield and labour, I think the underpass was going to pay for itself in about three and a half years. Okay, yeah. These were figures I, I put to my father as soon as he saw the payoff as well. And then also there was a the mindset that we'd put the money into sheds that would make life easier. And the argument was we'd be using this 10 months of the year. We'd yes. be only using the shed maybe four. Yeah. 
So yeah. it, it, it just all stacked up. Yeah, and I think uh, a lot of people find that a challenge putting money into grazing infrastructure. It, if yeah. they can see it in the side in a shed or something closer to the yard, they nearly feel it's easier to spend it there. Indeed, yes. Uh, when yeah. it's further out from the yard, it's kind of a bit of a mind block to, to spend in. Exactly, but it, it definitely changes the whole flow of the farm. Suddenly you have an extra, what's across the road, all that is accessible straight off the parlour gate. Yes. There's no, cows just walk off, they're in the field, you don't have to worry about where they are and who's going to cross the road. And It doesn't matter if it's a Sunday morning or a, a Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. You have huge freedom it's, with it. Exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah. So you've your effluent tank here? Yeah, um, the, 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 the underpass has progressed over the last number of years. When I went in originally in 2010, we just had a small soak hole. It wasn't even 2,000 gallons or 200 gallons in size. And we thought we just scrapped. And labour was getting a bit more tight. We realised that we weren't going to be standing there with a slurry tanker scraping in and soaking out and scraping and soak. So we've put in the 2,000 gallon tank here. Yeah. Uh, back, actually the same year we'd done the steps and we, we laid extra concrete as well. Okay. Um, we did come across uh, springs in the underpass, so during the winter months the springs opened up. The track was getting very dirty, adding to lameness then as well. So same again, we said we'd put the money where we could get the greatest returns. We could keep cows healthy, keep them walking, keep them moving. Um, we we're going to get a good return. So we've concreted it out. Uh, we've put down some rubber mats to see how that works. Just to, but at the moment, cow flow is so good that they generally don't, they never stop anymore. Previous to that, they were stopping because they didn't want to walk through the dirt. So now they just flow on through. And why the rubber mats eh, just within the underpass? Um, it, was a, it was a rubber mat that we took up off cubicles when we were changing sheds and we threw it down there to see what it work. The idea was that if stones were coming off the roadway and they were standing on a stone on the concrete, right. no it would bruise the soil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, look, it has made a big work, but um, we haven't seen the significance to, to do the rest of the roadway out either. Okay. Um, so uh, we're, we're, we're happy enough with that. The steps then above it, once they went in, then that was the cow flow completely sorted. You, you installed your, the main underpass in 2010? That's correct, you yes. Used a, you used, say, a ramp made of stone or whatever you, you made as best you could to ground. Did, yeah. We, we dug into the bank. Uh, it was only when we were digging the underpass that we found out that we actually had a hard veins of slate in it. Yeah, same uh, issue as blowing the correct. Same issue again, yeah. yeah this, this tr most of the bedrock around here is a soft shale, but there is slate uh, creeping out through it. Uh, we hit one vein about halfway up, just as we look up, just near the top of the underpass, you had one sharp vein sticking out there. Very unforgiving for cows. Uh, very hard. Yeah. Oh, we, we, we spent a day with a rock breaker on a 22 ton machine trying to crack it down. Yeah. Uh, but very hard on cows' feet. Okay, so for six years you used the ramp. Yeah. That's... And so what, your issues were what? Was it to just uh, we, Yeah, it? we were starting to know, uh, main issues were, were the back of the, the cow's feet were wearing out. Yeah. Uh, going up was no problem, but it was when they were going down, they'd put down their foot and then they'd slip maybe two, three foot down. Yeah. And it was the back of the heel, as they were sliding down that, it was wearing the back of the pads. And then that was getting into issues with uh, infection, but also um, stones cracking the white line and then getting out in the heel itself. Right, yeah. So um, that's when we, we, we realised we had to do something to overcome that um, the ramps on both spots. So. Okay, very good. So yeah. 216, you decided to put in the steps? That's correct, yeah. yeah. And, um, was yeah, that much we, of a job? No, we, we, had, we, we had done the, the trial work down at the collecting yard. What we done decided, working with myself and the builder, um, we decided that the easiest way was to pour steps on site. Yes. So um, we got four by four timbers. Um, so we had, we had this part out to here with the retaining walls. So we, we put down our first timber, pegged it on both sides with a sleeve on the, the, uh, the retaining uh, pins. Yeah. We measured back these ones, I think are actually 820. Yes. So we measured back 820, uh, got it level, and then pinned and put in the next timber. And we slowly stepped them all up. So as the timber was here and we were pouring, we had probably had about anything from 50 to 100 mil underneath, depending on, on bedrock. And the concrete, we started on the bottom one, worked our way up and the concrete came underneath the timber. So every step is linked in together. Right, they're well tied in. They're well tied in. Yeah. The one thing we had to watch out for was that the concrete wasn't too runny. We didn't want it flowing underneath right. timbers. Yeah. So look, it was a bit of experience with the builder and um, a bit of trial and error, but we got it working. 
poured it in two days. So we, we poured one lot up and then got the next one. Very good. So, so just height for people to roughly your height is? Uh, height on all our steps is 100 mil. Okay. Uh, or four inches in old language. And uh, uh, I believe these ones are? They're nearly three feet long there. And did you pour the steps flat? Are they, are they flat or is there a slope coming this there, way slightly? They, we poured them flat knowing that the concrete would move a small bit. So there is a tiny little fall on them. Yeah. But we wanted them, we wanted them level, so we did. Okay. So you, uh, did you back your, your concrete truck down or did you use a loader to fill the... Uh, we were able to bring it right in beside. Okay. And just using the chutes, we, we poured it off sideways. Right. Um, we had plenty of, of, of guys on, on, on duty that day with yeah. us. And um, as we were pouring it, there was one on either side just pulling it back and forth, leveling it off, then move up onto the next one. Right. And, uh, tap, and tap finished then? And tap finished. Uh, we had to be careful as we were tapping because we didn't want the concrete to move on from one step to the other. Yeah. So nice and gently just started at the bottom and worked away up along okay. the top. Yeah. Um, and just had a good and stiff. Yeah. So how long did you leave before you put your cows in it then? Uh, we done this during the dry period. Yeah. Uh, we done it, uh, we were, I, I suppose it was probably around the first week of... of January, just when the, all the, the companies were coming back, and probably cows didn't walk out till the first week of February. We start on the calving okay. about yeah. the 5th of February, so we right. did. And adjusted pretty quickly to today, the cows? They did, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. We thought we, uh, when we put in the first steps, we'd have to come along and encourage the cows to go up along and, uh, and get them trained to it. But no, um, once I suppose as well, it was lucky they'd been inside, they'd just calved, they knew they were going to grass and they just flowed up the steps. Yeah. Uh, no question. As soon as the first lot were out, bring them back in, there was a small bit of hesitation, but when you watch the cows come in this evening, there's no hesitation. I think they're nearly as comfortable going down as they are going up. They have full they, confidence in it. Yeah, they, yeah. They, you can see the confidence in them. They're yeah. just happy on them, so yeah. they are. Do they stay in the middle, the outside, or is there any particular pattern? Uh, because we're going straight, it doesn't matter where they go. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we see no difference, but when down at the collecting yard where you had the slight bend going to the right, uh, we would find that they tend to go on the inside. Yeah. Um, there's no difference in, 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 in depth of the steps, but they do seem to go to the inside of the curve. I see. And this is some of the stone you were contending with then, is it? Yeah, this is the, the, the bedrock we'd have underneath us. Yeah, so it's, yeah. Um, it quite, as you see, the veins are, are straight up. So when, when they're broken at surface level, you just have that sharp razor, razor edge on sharp. top. Yeah. 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 How many steps, roughly? Uh, I think there is, is a 38 in this section, so there is. Okay, very good. We did make a slight change to the plan once we got up to this height. Um, we decided that one of the main problems with, with, with concrete and cows, and you'll see here, with this hasn't been cleaned since last year, you get the odd small stone as cows come in. So we, we went a bit higher at the step yeah. uh, that the cows actually have to lift their foot to get in on the concrete now. Okay. So we, we generally don't get too many stones on. Yeah. Uh, also then to divert uh, the water from the roadway off back out. Okay, well, so. so that has helped, has it? It has, yeah. Yeah, and we, is it getting the cow to lift up her leg a bit more, or is she consciously lifting up her leg and leaving the stone behind her, or is uh, it just kicking? Uh, the, the, the extra step makes her lift her foot that little bit higher. Yeah, until uh, drop. It, it generally, you, you drop them, so you get very little stones in, in on the concrete okay, then after yeah. that. And that's where any of the damage we get now is usually from a bit of stone bruising or something. Yeah, yeah. it's something that's quite common in New Zealand, I think, in collecting yards as well. It is, and it was, it was, it was from that that we, we, we saw the trick of putting in that extra step. Yeah. Uh, it was from Neil Chesterton's, one of his talks that we saw that. Right, yeah, good, yeah, so. very good. And so look, then they have a fine roadway then back to the paddocks. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, nicely. Uh, same as every farm, we need to keep our roadway surfaced uh, fairly well. Yeah. Cow flow is a big part, but also then, like I said, if, if you have issues with lameness, it knocks on to everything. It, it can reduce your time walking in, yeah. it'll reduce your milk yield, and at this time of the year as well, fertility as well. So. Yeah, it all plays yeah. a big part in the whole circle. It does, yeah. yeah. Uh, Brian, when you were, say, constructing this, did you make ex extra provisions for services? We did, yeah. Um, we we realised that you don't get too much a chance to open up the road every time you want to put down water pipes and stuff. So we put two four-inch waven pipes on each side of the culverts. So here we have the main water line going through. So when we got in the, the boys to lay the new water system, instead of having to go and make the effort and, and get moles to go underneath the harbour cattle, we just told them that there were spare pipes here at the underpass yeah. and all they had to do was run it clean through. Right. And same with the electric fences there as well. Yeah. Um, when it comes to spreading slurry, the, the contractor just prefers to pull the pipes straight through the main culvert. Okay. So, 
and say your water pipe then is that a have you a looped water system from Terra or someone it is yeah it's uh there's two loops um one one below the road one above it and then that's the feed line going straight through so it okay is. yeah uh it's a 44 mil uh, loop system so it is okay good pressure everywhere good pressure we had to put in a, a slightly larger pump we have a reservoir at the, right beside the milking parlor but because we're driving up and over the far side of the hill um there's Roughly from the parlour to the top of the hill, there's roughly 160 feet, but then from the top of the hill down to the bottom, there's a drop of 300 feet. Yeah. So um, we just had to allow for the extra provisions of getting the pump to drive yeah. the water that distance. Big swings in pressure, so? There is, yeah. Gradients. There's pressure reducers then once you get to the top of the hill, because we can actually blow off ball cocks at the bottom of the hill, so right. we can. Okay, yeah, so. yeah, good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Say your milking time sense in, in, in the afternoon, Brian, what time? So do the cows come out of the paddock at typically? Uh, cows uh, come out at uh, uh, 10 to 3. Uh, the, the main idea is to have the parlour running by half 3. Okay. Um, I do very few evening milkings. Um, we're lucky we have a farm that's safe to justify uh, having staff with us. Uh, we have a very good team, but the one thing we want to do is make sure that we are, have a comfortable working environment. I do probably 90-95% of the morning milkings, it suits me, I live on farm yeah. uh, and then the t uh, whoever's, whoever's working with me, they come in roughly around 8 o'clock, they do the evening milking but generally they're off the farm between about half five every evening. Yeah, it's an important uh, balance there if you can get home early. Exactly, exactly, like we're lucky the girl that works with us now, she's getting back to rugby training, she's got to travel to get down to, to practice. So she knows that she's not going to miss a, a, yeah. a, a training or any of the events because the cows are, are late coming in. Yeah. So that's one great thing about the bachelor as well. The cows are trained, they know once it gets to that time of the evening, yeah. there's always one starting kind of watching the gap. As soon as it's open, there's a nice steady flow of them yeah. all running in. So you're quite a long farm and you've, uh, say, 300 plus cows, so... Yeah. It takes time to get in the cows, so you, you use a bat latch to let the cows off early that they're walking in themselves. do, yes, yeah. yeah. And it's one great thing about, uh, with the underpass, you don't have to worry about the roads either. Yeah. But like, if the cows are at the far end of the farm over the bottom of paddock 15, they have to cut, climb 300 feet to get to the top of the hill. That's a very slow walk yeah. getting cows up in the morning or anything. And you don't push them with a quad or anything then? No. There's, yeah. there, there's no, uh, we're about a year and a half on the batch latch now. Yeah, we just know that look in, in the morning as I made to get 20 minutes extra sleep uh, I get up the cows are generally the first ones are starting to get to the yard I go up along the through the paddocks and I generally meet the last one probably halfway up along and so and then just walk in nice and, and you walk in are you are you walking for the cows yourself I walk uh, yeah, yeah I walk and um, very seldom we, we follow with the quad just nice relaxed atmosphere around with the cows don't want to rush them around and um, so yeah the, the, the people that work with me they at first, they don't like going off the idea of having to walk off across the paddocks, but by the time at the end of their placement or their, they get used to it, they, they start to relax and uh, enjoy the walk in with the cows. You yeah. see them walking in with their arms up over the last one, petting and scratching her as they go. So. Has it always been your policy? or? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's pretty much always been the policy. Yeah. Um, I suppose, well, uh, it's, it's, look, I enjoy the, the, the world around us. It's nice walking in and a nice quiet morning, appreciating the... The, the wildlife and talking to Izzy, the dog, as you, as you go along. So, yeah, it's it's um, a nice part of the day. I, I appreciate it. Anyway, yeah, so. yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah.